So the holiday season is upon us here in Ash Grove. We're just a few days out from Thanksgiving, and of course that always triggers the start of the Advent season and the coming of Christmas. And here in Ash Grove, that always means you know gatherings of families and friends here at Thanksgiving time. Uh, and for even uh, before Ash Grove was founded as a town, uh, back to the 1840s, people were celebrating Thanksgiving here in Ash Grove. If we look at the Springfield newspapers from the 1840s, we see governor's proclamations of Thanksgiving as a holiday. Uh, when we look at early journals, we see entries of people talking about Thanksgiving as this just gathering of family and friends. Uh, but it never really had the traction that Christmas had behind it. You know, in 1939, President Franklin Roosevelt changed uh, Thanksgiving to the third week of November in an attempt to stimulate the economy during the Depression. It wasn't until 1942 that he actually moved it back uh, to the last Thursday in November. But in Ash Grove, it always seemed to be a gathering of family and friends. Uh, but perhaps the most newsworthy event that took place in Ash Grove happened in 1934, when 15 and a half inches of snow fell on the afternoon of Thanksgiving. It brought down hundreds of power poles. It brought down the phone lines. Uh, it was this terrific snowstorm uh, that made headlines for years to come. People saying, hey, you remember the snowstorm? Uh, hey, you remember when Ash Grove was out power? Hey, you remember when the power lines were down? And of course, Christmas is the same way. And we have to think that Christmas in Ash Grove uh, has been celebrated for more than 185 years. Uh, even as the, the Boone family arrived here in Ash Grove, uh, Ash Grove was this giant melting pot of people moving in from literally all across the world. Many families uh, here in the Ozarks uh, actually early on acknowledged what was Old Christmas. And old Christmas was on January 6th, uh, and uh, they didn't recognize December 25th, really a lot of them, until uh, the Civil War. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, folklores and legends uh, that Vance Randolph collected uh, in, in relationship to Old Christmas. And uh, a lot of them are pretty crazy by today's standards. Uh, one of the traditions uh, that uh, Randolph collected was that you had to have all the greenery removed from your house by January 5th, or great calamity may come to your house. Uh, some of the other traditions that he collected, he said that uh, if you snuck out uh, to your beehive on the stroke of midnight at old Christmas and put your ear on the beehive, that you could hear bees hum the old Christmas hymn. And one of the other uh, traditions that he collected uh, was that if you snuck out to your barn and you spied in on your cows, they gained the gift of the ability to be able to bow down and pray at the strike of midnight. Uh, so, you know, you got to think that the Ozarks uh, were pretty remote uh, and pretty uh, removed from the world uh, in the 19th century. And that's how some of these old uh, folk traditions really carried on. And they seem pretty bizarre by today's standards, but uh, they, were, they were pretty standard uh, and they were pretty widespread at the time. Uh, it wasn't really until the Civil War 
When we start to see Christmas as we know it really come into play, that's when we start seeing mentions of Christmas trees in newspapers. Uh, here in Ash Grove, uh, after the town's incorporation in 1871, that's when we start to see the businesses downtown start to advertising for Christmas as, as a great way to market. By the turn of the century, you know, we had uh, several businesses that were established on Main Street. Uh, and as Ash Grove uh, receives electricity in 1910, uh, in 1911, we all of a sudden start seeing the first mentions of electric Christmas lights in Ash Grove. And then downtown, uh, we see our first mention of a Christmas tree uh, in an early Ash Grove newspaper is a tree that was erected on the west end of Main Street. The west end of Main Street at one time uh, was known as Union Park. And Union Park was the area uh, where uh, people got off the train and it was their first thing that they saw in Ash Grove. And there was a flagpole there and it would become a park area. Um, and there was a Christmas tree. So you can imagine arriving to Ash Grove by train and you get off the train here at the end of West End of Main Street, and here's this Christmas tree. Uh, and businesses uh, and the newspapers were reporting thousands of people in Ash Grove shopping for the holidays. You know, you think about that. Thousands of people visiting Ash Grove to do their holiday shopping. You know, the schools would put on uh, Christmas programs. Uh, the Parent Teacher Association in Ash Grove uh, used to advertise in the newspapers that uh, at the holiday times, it was especially important to make sure the kids were fed and had presents. And the Parent Teacher Association in the morning would pass out hot chocolate to kids and they would make sure that uh, all the kids got a present. Um, and you know, that's something we think about too. We think about the holiday season uh, being celebrated always in good times. Um, but here in Ash Grove, that wasn't always the case. You know, in, in the late 1930s with the Depression, uh, we see some interesting things happening. We see uh, businesses advertising, of course, the new wares being sold out of their stores. And right next to those newspaper articles, we see ads running for uh, the collection of used shoes uh, to pass out to kids at schools because they were coming to school uh, in cold weather without shoes. Um, and then moving along, you know, to 1942, uh, the United States had entered World War II, and we see on the front page of the Ash Grove Commonwealth, uh, this bulletin that says, you know, Ash Grove downtown won't be lit up for the holiday season. Uh, they were attempting to, you know, save the resources for the war effort, uh, but more importantly, you couldn't have outside lights uh, because, you know, there was these fears that the United States could be attacked and you didn't want towns lit up. And we see this, this, this advertisement run, you know, saying, hey, you know, you can have Christmas lights inside, but don't put them outside your house. And then in the next week's newspaper, we see blackout drills happening in Ash Grove where you're trying to black out all the lights from inside your house so town is completely dark. You know, once we get out of World War II, uh, we start to see the Christmas parade come back. The Christmas parade, to the best of my research, has ran for at least 75 years. Uh, it may date back to the 30s, uh, but we know by the late 1940s for sure we see advertisements of it. And by the 1950s, uh, we see advertisements of pageants happening downtown uh, and, and Christmas trees and, and the shopping had returned and the joy had returned by the 1950s and of course into the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, in the 19 uh, late 1980s and early 1990s, uh, you'll hear stories of uh, the evening Christmas parades when the Christmas parades ran in the evenings. And that's one of the things we're excited to see come back to Ash Grove this year is the Twilight Christmas Parade uh, and to see that tradition return. You know, I want to wish everybody uh, a happy and safe holiday season as you're venturing out uh, this year around Ash Grove. And I want you to look around and, and think about the traditions of, of past and think about the holidays of past. And maybe there's a tradition you and your family uh, can bring back out and resurrect this year. Uh, happy holidays and be safe. Thank you.